The video you're gonna see next is shot by a good friend of mine called Emmanuel. He shot this on his Mavic Pro 2. Let's get to it. Hey guys, how are you doing this fine Wednesday? Actually, I'm shooting this on Tuesday, but it's Wednesday when you're seeing it or unless I'm late and I how are you guys doing today? Thank you so much for tuning in today and today I'm talking to you guys about my videos. A friend of mine, Chirag, asked me to make a video about how I make videos and so I thought I'll take a quick second to show you guys how I make my videos. First of all, I start with a script. I write this down on my computer on Google Drive. The reason I use Google Drive is so that it's accessible to be to me on my iPad when I'm trying to make the video. I, if I forget something, then I can just look at all the points that I made on my iPad and that way I'm sure that I did not forget something. So many times when I finish shooting, I come back home and realize that there was this really important thing that I completely forgot to talk about. That's why I write the script down. Now when it comes to cinematography, you need to worry about the lighting and the sound. This is really important. When it comes to the lighting, I decided to make videos outdoors instead of making them indoors because it's diffused if it's a cloudy day and you can you don't need to worry about that. Whereas indoors, you need to worry about buying a reflector, a new source of light because rooms are just not well lit enough for DSLR cameras or cell phone cameras. But if you can't find a silent space, then I think you should try to make a video indoors. When I choose a place to shoot, I make sure that I am not in between the camera and the source of light. If it's a cloudy day like today, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I just hold my camera in my hand and I turn around to see which gives me the best exposure. But in case there is a strong source of light, make sure that when you're shooting your video, you can see the camera and the source of light, you know? If you put the light behind you for whatever reason, if you need it behind you, then you need to compensate for that darkness on your face by throwing more light on your face with another lighting device. If you don't want to worry about it, don't put the light behind you. Just make sure that the light and the camera are in front of you when you're speaking into the camera. After my script and choice of place is done, I just pick my camera and step into the tramway. Okay, this tip may help you guys to pick a place to record. When I pick a place to record, I make sure to be closer to the walls of a building in a sense that if the light is falling on the building, then its reflection is falling on your face. The advantage of putting yourself close to a building or a little hill like this, you can see that the hill is way taller than my camera is. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but the hill is actually pretty close and it's a really steep hill. If you guys move closer to a building or a hill like this, then there are no strong winds hitting your microphone. You know, if you're just standing in that shelter spot, like imagine that the wind was like light, then you're standing in the shadow of that light. You see what I'm saying? The reason I do that is so that there's no harsh wind hitting my microphone. So jumping straight into the sound, I'm using a DSLR right now and DSLRs have really poor sound. The reason they have a microphone is not so that you can use the sound from the microphone. It's so that you can sync the sound that you record from an external device into your video. It's surprising to me how good microphones are on a phone and how bad microphones are on a DSLR. So I got this Stackstar shotgun directional mic. Actually, uh, some of my friends in the farm gave it to me as a gift. I worked on a farm last year, guys. Uh, that was awesome. It was so much fun. They even gave me the lens that I'm shooting with. I had a 50mm lens, which meant that I had to stand way over there in order to shoot. Now I have a closer 13mm lens and I got this lens and the microphone for free at the farm. If you can go live on a farm, go live on a farm. You'll get free stuff. No, really. I mean, these guys have been such a blessing to me. Apart from just learning the language, they also have given me this gear that I could shoot with. For the settings on the DSLR, I set everything to manual first of all. Uh, the exposure is on manual, the ISO is on manual, the shutter speed, uh, aperture, everything is on manual. Once I do that, I set the sh shutter speed according to the 180 degree rule and set my sound input to manual. Actually, there's this guy who taught me how to shoot videos with my 60D. I'll leave a link of his video in the description. He does a really good job of how to set the settings on your DSLR. You guys should check him out. It's really windy. I can feel it in my on my face, so I'm gonna stop talking. 
Real quick about the light, I invested in this really handy dandy light by this company called Aperture. It's called the Amaron ALM9. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. This is a really handy device. I picked this up for 50 euros and it's a really bright source of light. Even in a bright day like this, there's such a huge difference. You know, it feels like a cumbersome task, but then if the lighting is really poor, then it's really worth it. So I just keep this in my jacket or in my backpack just in case the lighting is very, very bad. When it comes to the music on my videos, I use a YouTube audio library. It's gotten so much better over the past year. Just one year ago, they didn't have such collections and now they have such a good collection. Sorry about that sound guys, I, re I need to get to class after this so I'm scramming that into my video. Sorry about that sound. First thing you need to worry about is the message that you're trying to say and secondly it's a guess. So a quick rundown about the things you absolutely need to make videos is one first of all you need a good computer. I got a really fancy computer because um, I got the scholarship when I moved to France. God's been awesome. I got a scholarship when I moved to France and my parents put some money aside so that I can get a really fancy computer. I got the 2015 MacBook Pro, 15 inches i7 processor. It's a good computer. There are so many Windows computers that you can use as well and you need to get familiarized with the software. So first of all, you need a good computer. Secondly, you need a recording device. I use a Canon 60D. I got that uh, off of Amazon for around 400 euros. The reason I picked this camera is because earlier I had another 60D. No matter which lens I put on my old camera, the autofocus just didn't work. So I did some research and got this Canon 60D. It's still a second-hand camera, but it's in better condition. So I don't really have to stand in exactly one place, you know. I can move a bit and it still works. The reason I like a DSLR is because once you set it up, once you put the settings in, you can just forget about it. If I'm shooting it on my phone, then I need to make sure I'm not getting any messages or calls at that time. I need to make sure there's enough storage space on my phone to record the whole video. Secondly, I do tech videos, so I want you guys to look at my phone you know another thing I like about this camera is that it has a flip screen to make sure that there are no disturbances from behind you know that's what I really like about this camera the Sony a7 III that dream camera that I want to buy doesn't have it so I'm not gonna jump into it for now if not for a DSLR you can even do that with your smartphone you can even use a secondary camera that's in front and you can see such good quality of video that comes out of your camera what you're seeing now is out of my phone's camera and I think the quality is not that bad. If you, if I use a tripod, this is what it would look like in the, in the landscape mode. And I think the quality is really good to start with, you know. That's the secondary camera, not even the primary camera. The camera on your smartphone is so much smarter than the one in the DSLR. It compensates so quick. Here's a quick example of a video that I shot on my phone. I stepped into a bright place from a dark place and I didn't even think about it. And my, ca and my phone's secondary camera did such a good job in compensating for the two, you know. My go-to camera will be my smartphone if I'm traveling because it, it's just so smart, so convenient and such good quality. Last month in December, I had to travel to Paris and I didn't want to carry my heavy camera and microphone with me when I was going there, you know. So I was there for two weeks and I used my phone. I have the OnePlus 5T. I use this phone to record two of my videos. I'll just show you guys two shots, one of which is shot on the DSLR and another one which is shot on the smartphone. Try to spot which one was on the DSLR. If it's a brand new city and you've never been here before, even if you've been there before, USB-C is the fastest USB there is right now. And the best feature about it, these videos are so comparable, it doesn't really matter which camera you have. I would like the Sony a7 III to shoot with because it's really small in size and it shoots amazing video, amazing slow-mo. But honestly, I don't need it. I just want it, you know. It's so easy to preach this, but then when you have to make a video, you always feel that better gear always makes better videos. I think a better use of your time is to practice the delivery of the message you want to say because you can't learn it overnight. Cameras, 
I think you can earn it over time or someone will probably gift you one but what you can't really get overnight or no one can buy that for you is your style of speaking you know and you'll develop that over time no one's born with one you'll develop that over time you need a good tripod actually scratch that a bad tripod will do my first tripod was around 10 euros around in 800 900 rupees if you invest in a dslr then consider investing in a good mic as well because a really good quality video with bad audio is just unbearable no one's going to watch that because your ears are really sensitive and that's it if you have a message to say pick up your phone and practice saying it in front of your phone you'll fall in love with making videos after you start making videos even though your videos are not so good something like your powerpoint presentations you know and your kids yours are always the best <laughs> thank you so much for that was dilbert thank you so much for watching this video guys take care of yourselves keep learning and i'll see you guys next week oh.